Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Allahumma salli wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad Last class we discussed the definitions of imagery and we said imagery is uh, is not an image it's a, a motion picture of image motion series of pictures create in the mind created in the mind uh, just because of something we read or something we hear we, can, we study also the types of imagery what types are imagery? we can have a visual imagery we can have an uh, audio imagery what is an audio imagery? Audio imagery is something we can almost hear. Audio or auditory imagery. Finally, we can have a tactile imagery. It is something we can almost feel in the mind. It's always in the mind. Remember, it's not something we can watch or actually feel or hear. Because when we watch it, it's not imagery. It's a movie. Or it's reality. It's an experience. It's no longer imagery. When we feel it, it's not an imagery. It's something sensory. It's in our hand. But when we almost feel it, we can call it imagery. And we had some examples last class, remember? When I talked about a delicious dinner, a delicious banquet. Guests are having dinner. And one of the guests mentioned a very disgusting thing like uh, a glass of cockroach juice or a glass of frog juice right and what happens you can notice that some of the some of the guests will 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 quit their dinner why because their mind is playing tricks with them their mind is generating an imagery of someone who is drinking a disgusting glass of frog juice, which is really ugh. Is there really a glass of this disgusting animal on the on the table? No, it's not on the table. Nobody can see it. Nobody. No, it's not there. But because someone has mentioned it. The, some people are some, you know, somehow sensitive to these uh, references. So normally, they, they, uh, they quickly generate these images in mind. And because of these images, they usually are affected. We have established that imagery is a series of motion pictures generated in the mind because of something we read or something we here, uh, the imagery could be of audio impact or tactile impact or visual impact. I mean, something we can see or something we can almost hear or something we can almost what? Feel. You following? What does tactile mean? Tactile means sensory. Something we can almost feel. Today we're, uh, we're having more examples. We are uh, reading more uh, haikus for practices. Let's get to Matsubasho. This is the name of the poet and from the sound of the name, from the pronunciation of the name, we can almost tell that he is Japanese. Matsubasho. Well, what's the title of the poem? Or We can't safely call it a poem because it's a very short poem. It's haiku. What's the title of the haiku? In the old stone pool. Uh, let's uh, repeat it because it's the same first line of the poem. In the old stone pool, a frog jump, splish. That's it. Full stop. This is not part of the poem. This is not part of the poem. So the, the, the haiku is only three lines, as you can see. The haiku is only three lines, and successfully the lines are almost 17 syllables, and this is what a haiku is about. A haiku is a poem, a very short poem of how many syllables? How many syllables? 17 syllables. 17 syllables.
It's a Japanese literary form. That's why uh, the masters of this type of poems are, are Japanese. But let's get to the poem. Um, which part of the title that you don't understand? Which part of the title that we don't understand? In the old stone pool, the speaker heard a frog jump. Not a frog juice, a frog jump. And we got a colon here, a colon, followed by the onomatopoeia, splish. What is onomatopoeia? It's a sound of something's impact into the water. Right? When you jump into the water, when anything is thrown, thrown into the water, what happens? We hear its impact sound in the water. What do you, why does, does it repeat the, the H sound, the H letter? Splish, in other words, he could clearly hear the frog jump sound in the water very distinctively. It's very clear. This is the speaker. Where is the speaker? We don't care about who the speaker is. We want to know how, how does the haiku suggest the setting? What's the setting of the poem? Setting. Place and time. Place and time. What's the setting? What's the time and the place of the poem? Where is everything happening, I mean? What is the context of the, of the poem? Usually, the haiku suggests something. It says something, but it suggests something else. That's what imagery is all about. First of all, what, uh, let's review the meaning of onomatopoeia. What is onomatopoeia? Onomatopoeia is a literary figure of speech when we have the words, the words pronunciation suggests its meaning. طريقة لفظ الكلمة توحي بماذا؟ توحي بمعناه توحي بماذا؟ Do you do you have other other examples of onomatopoeia? Give me other words where we have, for example, the, the pronunciation of the word suggests its meaning. Like the word buzz. Have you heard of it? Buzz. Like the word um, gargle. Like the word... Um, um, there are other words. Hissing. Hissing. Hissing snake. Where is the imagery? As you read the poem, do we have imagery? Yes, we carry imagery. The mind generates the imagery of a jump, a jumping frog, or a frog jumping into a, a, an, an old stone pool. And the frog jump results in a little sound of splishing. A little sound of a splish. Well, what type of imagery is this? We can almost hear it. But can we see it now? No, it's not there. We are here in the classroom. We've got no draw we've got no we got no frogs around. So this is called imagery. Now, what does the imagery suggest here? First of all, it suggests setting. Place. Where do we have frogs active? Do you have frogs in houses, for example? Do we raise frogs in our bedroom? No. Yes. We don't, we don't raise frogs in bedrooms. Usually frogs do not grow uh, indoors. So where do they grow? Where, where are they active? Usually they are active. Uh, at you know outdoors place outdoors and where is the speaker is the speaker indoors or outdoors outdoors 
The speaker must be outdoors, close to what? Close to an old stone pool. He is very close. No, because if he is not close to an old stone pool, as the title suggests, then how could he hear a frog jump into the water? He would not. He would never be able to hear a frog jump into the, into the water. What time is it? Night. Why night? Yeah, it's correct. Night, because I have already mentioned it. But why night? Because frogs are not at the day. So usually frogs are not active in the day. They are active at night. So we can easily suggest that the poem is about a speaker who is at night very close to an old stone pool. Explain the imagery. Let's explain the imagery. The imagery, first of all, is audio, as you all said. Speaker is alone. Close to an uh, old stone pool, outdoors, you can see that this is the first line repeated from the first question. The speaker hears a sudden, the speaker hears a sudden frog jump. And the sound of the jump is what? It's very distinctive. It's very clear. But why is it clear? Because it was a very quiet night. Imagine, imagine the, the speaker is having 50 people around. 50 people or he is in the jolt of the noisy city. Would he be able to hear a very quiet frog jump? No, he would not be able to hear that. Why? Because it's a very quiet sound that needs complete silence for anyone to hear. It needs even an absolute silence in order to be heard. It's like the buzzing of a fly or the buzzing of a mosquito, right? When do we hear the buzzing mosquitoes? When we are on bed, right? Close to sleep. Almost in the dark. The, dark is out, the, the lights are out, the room is closed, and all of a sudden we hear what? Buzzing fly or buzzing mosquitoes. I hate mosquitoes. Then what, what, could, what enables us to hear that? Because it's absolutely quiet. Without the quietness of the place, nobody would be able to hear the buzzing fly or a buzzing mosquito or a frog jump splashing into the water. Clear. Scroll down to the bottom to Kobayashi Isa. Again, another Japanese poet, another Japanese poet, and our poem is about cricket. The haiku says, cricket, be careful, I'm rolling over, finished. What is a cricket? It's not the sport. It's not the famous Indian and Pakistani sport. Cricket is that insect usually active and heard at night and it's famous for its sound that produces after it rubs its two wings it's a squealing sound speaker saying or addressing the cricket saying cricket be careful i am rolling over well we need to answer this important question. You can see on the, on the opening, on the top of the following page. How do you think the images suggest the context of the haiku? We need to, un to analyze the haiku, to study what the context of the haiku is. When we talk about context, please start thinking about what time is it? It's, yeah, it's supposed to be night. This is over because crickets are active at night, right? Let's get to the place. What's the place? Huh? His bedroom, for example? 
on the dinner table? Where could this possibly be? Crickets are not house insects, like, you know, like roaches, for example, like flies, like mosquitoes. Crickets are not house pests, are not house insects. They are outdoor insects. They live outside. Usually, crickets live nearby, uh, near, you know, any grassy area any grassy area, which is supposed to be wet. So we could successfully decide the time and the place, right? Let's get to the context, to the reason, to the occasion. What makes a speaker, a man, a sensible person, tell a cockroach, sorry, tell a cricket to be careful? Is he someone crazy talking to a cricket? This indicates that the speaker is lying on the ground. He is not standing up. The question, what makes the speaker lie on the ground? What could possibly make the speaker lying on the ground? So, can't we think that the speaker is, uh, you know, like camping? Can't we say that the speaker could possibly be camping? So, the speaker is most probably sleeping or trying to sleep in an open grassy area. But when he starts to sleep, he hears the sound of a cricket. Producing, no, you know, the, 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 the cricket usually squeals his and rubs its wings to produce that squealing sound. And speaker does not want or cannot sleep. That's why he starts to threaten or to warn the cricket. Be careful, shut up, or I will roll over and kill you. I don't know exactly where you are, but I can completely roll over you and smash you. Devastate every, you know, every joint of yours. Is this clearly suggested in the poem? Yes, we can say that. We can say that very clearly. Yeah, is that done? Last poem is Richard Brodigan. Haiku Ambulance. The last exercise poem is Haiku Ambulance. When we hear the siren of the ambulance, what comes in mind? Usually, we associate ambulances with accidents, right? Could be car accident, could be home accident, could be fire, a uh, building that catches fire, car accidents, fall accident, slippery accident, whatever. The point is, we usually know that there must have been an accident and the accident is really serious. Because usually ambulance are not for silly accidents. It has to be serious, right? Usually ambulance are called on for serious accidents, right? Let's get to the accident. The, spe the, the, the haiku is supposed to be an accident, right? Let's go. A piece of green pepper fell off the wooden salad bowl. Colin, so what? Telephone, as you prepare salad, what happens? Usually, we cut salad into pieces. Now, who is speaking? We need to know who is speaking and who is listening. So what? Who is asking this question? We need to identify the speakers. Who are the speakers of the poem? Who is cutting up the pieces? The mother, of course. It's a mother's job. Kitchen is usually a mother's job. We don't have, we don't have children cutting up salads. So the mother is cutting up the, the, the salad. Well, suddenly, some pieces of salad comes out. 
drops out, fell out, fell off the ball. Is this natural? Yes, it's natural. It can happen every day. But we have a question over here. So what? There is another person watching in the kitchen. It could be a child. What makes you think it's a child? Well, it is a, a child who is watching his mom, right? Right? A child who is watching his mom. And normally, what do we ask children to do as they eat? We usually ask children not to drop food in the ground. But here, the mother has dropped a piece of green pepper. Usually, the kid is going to be alarmed. You could possibly gasp, like, look, mom, you have dropped this piece of green pepper. And you tell us not to drop food in the ground. Right? Normally, children are alarmed when we do something we ask them not to do. Right? So, the question here has got a, uh, a context. The mother would ask this. So what? It's a piece of green pepper. So what? It's not a big deal. It's not a big dilemma. Right? For us, it's not a big dilemma. But for the kid, what? For the kid, it's a break of law. It's a break of regulation. What's the law? What's the rule? What's the house rule for the child? Don't drop food on the ground. The mother has violated this very big rule of food. She has dropped that piece of green pepper, of course, unintentionally. She did not mean that. She did not mean to drop that food or that, that piece of green pepper. But for the kid, it means... A violation of the rule one of the house's rules so let's study the image how does the image suggest the settings well the place must be the kitchen as we all have agreed the time could be in the afternoon or in the evening can't can it be in the morning can the, time of the, can the time of the haiku be in the morning? No, why not? We don't eat salad in the morning. We eat salad in the afternoon, eat salad at night, but we don't eat salad in the morning, right? So the time is definitely going to be either in the afternoon or in the evening, right? Speakers. Who are the speakers? Or oh, the, speaker the speakers are preparing salad. Probably the mother has dropped a piece of green pepper as she was cutting up the vegetables. Probably there is a kid around who is alarmed to see. Why? Because he can, he can see there's a the piece of pepper on the ground. Usually, kids are asked not to drop, to drop food in the ground. Can anybody tell me what kind of imagery do we have in this haiku? The answer is, this is... A visual imagery. Yeah, this is a visual imagery. Well, we had a, a, a more important question. What's the relation between the title and the haiku? You see the haiku is? The haiku title is Haiku Ambience. Right? We are going to read an accident, right? Where is the accident in the haiku? Well, is this really an accident? No, it's not an accident. It's not an accident because we normally come across people who drop food as they cut pieces of vegetables every day. Do you have to call ambulance for this? No, it's crazy to call ambulances for these things. So the point is, what is the relation between the title and 
بهايته. I will leave this as research question. Please try to do your research. Send your answer to my email.